Hi, Today we're going to be talking about postnatal bone growth. So while yesterday we talked about the growth of bones in the fetus or in the embryo um, developing from cartilage into bone, now we're going to talk about what happens after you're born and grow taller and wider and everything like that. So let's get into the video. All right, so there are two types of bone growth. Um, your bones need to grow longer and they need to grow thicker. So these two actually use two different mechanisms. So um, the first type is called interstitial growth. And this is the growth in length of long bones. So this is the bones in your arms and your legs. Um, and this is very similar to the endochondral ossification that we talked about yesterday. Remember that endochondral ossification occurs within cartilage. Um, you have this hyaline cartilage model and then gradually the cartilage is being replaced by bones through the actions of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. So this is strikingly similar um, and it occurs at hyaline cartilage called epiphyseal plates. And there's actually a very thin layer of hyaline cartilage um, at the junction of the epiphysis and diaphysis at each end of the long bone. We will look at this more in detail later, but there are different zones of cartilage that form a transition between the cartilage and the bone. The epiphyseal plate does not always stay cartilage throughout life. Um, at the end of adolescence, the epiphyseal plate undergoes something called closure. And um, that is when all of the cartilage has turned into bone and the epiphyseal plate becomes what's called an epiphyseal line. And that's just um, a part of compact bone in between two regions of spongy bone at the junction of the epiphysis and diaphysis. So after your epiphyseal plate closes for that bone, that bone can no longer grow in length and that is um, the height that you end up being for all of your adulthood. So that is one type of growth. Interstitial growth is growth in length and then growth in thickness is called appositional growth. So basically this is just when osteoblasts secrete extracellular matrix on the surface of the bone while osteoclasts work um, on the inside of the bone to enlarge the cavity inside and um, through the actions of both of these cells the bone can grow thicker and sturdier. All right, now let's take a closer look at interstitial growth um, to see the four regions of cartilage. All right, now let's take a closer look at the four layers of cartilage in the epiphyseal plate that is used in interstitial bone growth, which is the growth of long bones in length. So this is a cross section of an epiphyseal plate in a bone. You can see that it's taken right there with this kind of lighter region in between the two regions of spongy bone being the hyaline cartilage um, that makes up the epiphyseal plate. This is taken from a young person whose epiphyseal plates have not closed yet, so we still see the cartilage rather than compact bone. So we're going to start here at the top actually and move downward. This right here would be the epiphysis of the bone. It's kind of hard to write on my computer, so I'm just going to label it epi. And down here, this is the diaphysis, which I'm going to label dia, just so we um, have our orientation in mind. So the resting zone is going to be the closest to the epiphysis of the bone. And this consists of small scattered chondrocytes that anchor um, the rest of the plate to the epiphysis up here. So these cells are inactive, they are not dividing, um, and the chondrocytes store lipids, glycogen, and proteoglycans, which will be necessary to secrete extracellular matrix um, for the future steps. In the second zone, which is the proliferation zone, the chondrocytes have become larger and they're stacked. See, they're kind of in vertical columns this way. And they secrete extracellular matrix. And this actually serves to lengthen the bone. So as the cells divide this way and this way, they expand. And the resting zone up here becomes further and further away from the diaphysis down here. Third, we have the hypertrophic zone. Um, and you can see that these chondrocytes have become a lot larger, more spherical, and wider than these in the proliferation zone up here. So they become larger, they're maturing, and they're also arranged in columns. 
These cells accumulate glycogen, lipids, and alkaline phosphatase. We talked about alkaline phosphatase briefly in the ossification video, but basically this mineral is very important for calcification. It is necessary to drive the calcification of cartilage. Um, so this marks the transition between the proliferation and the calcification in the next step. And um, the hypertrophic zone is also the weakest portion of the epiphyseal plate. Fourth, we have the calcification zone. In this zone, the chondrocytes die, and um, longitudinal bars of cartilage matrix become calcified by calcium salts, which show up as the bright white color you see in here. And um, this, at this point, even though the cartilage is calcifying, this is not considered bone yet. It is still cartilage, it's just covered by calcium salts. And what you have is trabeculae-shaped calcified cartilage, and it is not bone yet. It becomes bone in the next zone here, the ossification zone, in which osteoclasts dissolve the calcified cartilage and osteoblasts replace it um, with bone extracellular matrix by secreting osteoid, and that becomes the osseous tissue. Remember that osseous just means bone, so this is the actual bone tissue. That shows up in the darker purple in contrast to the lighter colors, which are calcified cartilage. So all in all, um, you have the extra chondrocytes that become replaced by bone. You get those from the proliferation zone here, and the chondrocytes kind of migrate in this direction downward toward the diaphysis, um, accumulating all of these substances, becoming calcified, dying, and being replaced by bone. And this is how the bone lengthens. You can imagine as more and more chondrocytes proliferate in this zone up here and more and more bone is created in this zone down here, um, the diaphysis, this kind of region down here, will lengthen and your bone will grow longer. So the epiphyseal plate, which is this entire thing, closes, which means that it becomes bone around the end of puberty. And basically what happens is that the proliferation zone becomes less and less active. The chondrocytes stop dividing, whereas the rest of the steps still continue. So um, what little chondrocytes are made um, die and they become bone and then there's no cartilage left to replace that. So eventually the entire epiphyseal plate is replaced by compact bone and this generally happens around the age of 18 in females and 21 in males. So that is when you stop growing. Okay, now that we've covered interstitial growth in a little bit more detail, let's talk about appositional growth. Remember that this is growth in thickness of the bone. So what you see in this diagram here, um, this diagram is from Pearson textbook. Um, the last diagram with the interstitial bone growth was from the Marie Ben Hohen textbook that I've been using. So in this diagram here, you see the cross section of a bone um, cut perpendicular to its axis. You see kind of um, the circumferential lamella here and maybe an osteon. Um, so this is the surface and this white layer is the periosteum, which is the connective tissue covering of the bone. The artery here is a periosteal artery that runs along the surface of the bone. So this is the bone surface that we're looking at. So in the first step, the periosteal cells um, differentiate into osteoblasts and the osteoblasts beneath the periosteum secrete bone matrix or osteoid and they do so kind of around these arteries that are laying on the surface of the bone and they form ridges that follow the course of the periosteal blood vessels so this is kind of a ridge called a periosteal ridge that surrounds the arteries and as these ridges grow and grow outward they enlarge and meet and um you see this tunnel forming around this artery. So while this artery used to be on the surface of the bone, it is now being surrounded by bone and is on the inside. So then the osteoblasts um, continue doing their work and they form concentric lamellae around this artery. See, all of these are concentric lamellae and it starts to um, 
to form an osteon. So the periosteum lining the tunnel is transformed into an endosteum. Remember that we talked about in the past, um, periosteum is on the surface of the bone, endosteum is on the inside of the bone, lining each of the herversion canals and into the canaliculi. That is what is happening here. So this white substance, it used to be on the outside of the bone being periosteum, but now it's on the inside and is considered to be endosteum. And the osteoblasts just deep to the tunnel endosteum secrete bone matrix narrowing the canal. So as we can see here, um, the hole used to be quite large, now it's narrowing, and then in the fourth step it's narrowing even more. So in this fourth step, this osteon has been completed, lots of concentric lamellae surround a central canal of the osteon, and this has matured. And then we see this process um, continuing further outward, um, the bone begins to envelop this artery as well, which is soon to meet the same fate. So it says below here in the caption, as the osteoblasts beneath the endosteum form new lamellae, a new osteon is created. Meanwhile, new circumferential lamellae are elaborated beneath the periosteum. So you still have osteoblasts over here underneath the periosteum, and they form circumferential lamellae. Remember that circumferential lamellae um, go around the circumference of the entire bone. So these up here, these lamellae, all this bone tissue, um, they're not quite surrounding an artery yet, so they're not part of an osteon. Rather, um, they kind of follow the circumference of the entire bone, so they're called circumferential lamellae. And they're elaborated beneath the periosteum, and the process is repeated, continuing to enlarge the bone diameter. So as the bone diameter increases, you actually obtain more and more osteons, and that arises from the arteries that are on the surface of the periosteum. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and leave any comments or questions down in the comments below. See you next time. Bye!